for my aircraft wing. Okay, so for this, uh, what are the uh, things we have to keep in mind and uh, uh, what are the parameters we are considering in order to find the value of uh, shear force, okay, uh, which has been acted upon on the aircraft wing. So basically, we have this aircraft wing. Uh, so like a root cord uh, and a tip cord, with respect to root cord and a tip cord, it is an trapezoidal wing so that I am finding the overall trapezoidal lift distribution, right? And uh, while you are calculating for shear force and the bending moment, uh, there is some uh, consideration that uh, <clears throat> this aircraft wing, uh, which has been uh, considered here, my wing is said to be as an cantilever beam, right? So my beam is said to be, that is the wing structure is said to be called as an cantilever beam. So which is rigidly supported at the wing roots and the critical loads that need to determine are the shear forces and depending moment along the span of the wing. So with which we have to take into account the loads which has been produced on the wing. So there will be two types of forces, one is component weight and then aerodynamic forces which has been acting on the wing, right? So with the help of this, uh, we have to uh, uh, find the shear force under bending moment diagram along this span. So it is uh, useful to divide the <coughs> wing into span wise segments of width delta y. So we are just uh, having this wing and we are dividing into delta y, right? And now uh, the elemental shear force, if we want to find the elemental shear force, the formula is if W is said to be the resultant load, then uh, the elemental shear force is nothing but we have the uh, shear force gradient. Okay, the shear force gradient is said to be called as W, right? Resultant load. So resultant load is nothing but shear force gradient. And then what about the shear force? Shear force is nothing but the momentum gradient. Okay, so what is that moment? Pending moment gradient. So uh, resultant load W is nothing but net load, which is not said to be called as an, we have lift load and we have the weight, uh, weight of the engine, weight of the wing structure, right? All these things taken into consideration, the resultant load is said to be called as W and uh, the uh, shear forces is nothing but, it is the bending moment gradient, right? Now, right from this, we are just, uh, uh, integrating this equation. So on integrating this equation, that is, I'm just rearranging this equation as like this. Right, so dV is equal to W into dV, right? And then on integrating on both sides, what I get? I'm getting V is equal to integral of W into dV, right? So this is the equation which has been written here. Right. And similarly, you are doing the same process for here. So dm is equal to, because we have to find the shear force and the bending moment, right? So dm is equal to v into t1, right? So on integrating what we get, we get bending moment is equal to integral of v into t1, right? Now using this far play, uh, we are going to estimate, we are going to estimate the uh, shear force and the bending moment of my designed wing, right? So according to the designed wing strategy, we have shear force diagram. We are going to plot shear force diagram now. So for shear force diagram, we have to find the wing weight distribution first. So wing weight distribution means uh, here, if I am considering my wing as like this. So my wing is said to be a trapezoidal wing like this, right? So in this wing uh, here, in this section where I am having the empennage and I am providing engine, right? So my aircraft engine is fixed here, right? And uh, the other aircraft structural weight is there and then where you are carrying the fuel inside the wing. Okay, so, so many constraints of that, right? Now I am considering the engine weight, okay, at this section. So where exactly I'm going to fix my engine is according to my design norms. Okay, so we got a span from uh, zero and uh, this is five meters of distance and the overall span of my wing is said to be, yes, overall span of my wing is said to be 18.4, right? So this is my semi-span of wing. So as, air, as such, 
we are just considering only the half wing so for that half wing okay you are just finding the wing weight distribution so the formula for finding the wing weight distribution is nothing but 0.05 w naught okay so w naught is nothing but the overall weight of the aircraft so we can also uh, formulate the weight of the wing using the uh, distribution so what will be the weight of the wing in terms of distribution it is nothing but 0 to b by 2 k into y square dv so here uh, this value of k is nothing but the uh, weight coefficient so the weight coefficient for uh, the pre calculated values of uh, 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 wing which carries single engine is having the influence coefficient or weight of the weight coefficient as k is equal to 17.9 so this is nothing but 17.92 is nothing but the pre calculated value from single engine configuration if you are using two engines in the wing this k value is said to be reduced okay so that value is maybe approximately within the limit of 8 to 10.9 okay for two engine configuration so that will be for two engine configuration okay so that the weight of the wing distribution may differ okay so the weight coefficient may differ if there are two engine but for single engine this is the weight distribution of the wing weight distribution right now uh, we have to find the engine weight so uh, i am considering the rolls royce engine here right so the weight of the rolls royce engine is about uh, 4900 kg and i am con converting this into newton and i am considering weight of the engine right so after that what we are going uh, we are going for net load distribution so this is the term w so we have to integrate this w right so that is the formula of uh, shear force which i have uh, mentioned earlier so v is equal to integral of w into dy right so here we have to find the net load distribution now so it is nothing but lift minus weight of an engine landing gear structure so that is if you are carrying landing gear so in few aircraft a landing gear has been carried inside the wing where engines were not present okay so the engine will be found in uh, front uh, end or in the rear end okay so for that cases uh, we will be using landing gear so landing gear has been carried inside the wing right so that you are kind of to consider the landing gear so in uh, in your aircraft okay you have to see this particular section and you have to work it out properly right for my aircraft uh, only engine is present in the wing so no landing gears so landing gears are available in the fuselage structure so in, while we are calculating the shear force and the uh, bending moment distribution inside the fuselage, we will be considering this part as a different. Okay, right. Now uh, we have the lift equation. So according to me, what is my lift equation? So my lift equation, this is my lift equation, which has been already estimated, right? So in this, I'm just multiplying this 350, into this 1 and 0 0.04. And I am making this equation as like this. After multiplying, okay, I'm having this lift equation like this. So this is my lift equation. And then minus of weight of the engine. So only weight of the engine is there. So in my structure, so I'm considering 48069 uh, as an engine weight. <coughs> okay. And I can subtract this. Okay. So we can still elaborate this equation as W is equal to. Uh, uh, can you subtract and tell me the value? So 35036.54 minus uh, 48069 so what is the answer so you one three zero three two point four six okay and then we put together have the another term as minus so minus one four zero one point four six four five right so this is your weight distribution, which has been considered for zero to five. And here you can feel the weight as negative. So up to five meters. And then and after five meters, there is no engine weight. Okay, only the wing structure is present. So you will be having only the lift equation then. Okay. And you are considering only the lift equation then. And we have the W, uh, which has been spread out from the limit five to 18.42. Okay okay right now uh after this net load distribution okay we are going to calibrate the shear force now so shear force means uh, we have to integrate this equation 
so while you are integrating this equation okay so we will be having this integral equation like this right so while you are performing some integral steps here okay you will be having this equation okay that is uh, we have to doing the integration process so we have the rearrange the equation like this so here i am going to find the value of v s so integral of uh, this w so i am doing this integral step i am having minus 13032.46 into y and then we have another y just you are integrating this step you are having minus 1401.462 y square divided by 2 now we can write this v equation as minus of 13032.46y minus of so what is this answer so 100.731 okay so this is your shear force calculation up to span number 5 okay that is from 0 to 5 and afterwards we will be having the span equation like this so for your next limit okay we will be having this uh, w equation that is your second equation of limit and uh, for this what you are going to do you are going to integrate this step so y and then this y becomes as uh, y square okay so this y becomes as y square so we are having this uh, shear force equation now now what we are going to do is we are going to calculate the shear force diagram with the help of these equations so there are two limits for calculating the shear force so one limit is nothing but w uh, that is v is equal to minus 13032.46 into y minus 700.731 y square so with the help of this from 0 to 5 you are computing this result and uh, after that we are going for uh, 5 to 18.42 as the shear force with this equation right we are going to use this equation for this limit and we are going to use this equation for this limit right and uh, we can calculate it directly through the excel sheet right so we are going to plot shear force diagram now so first of all we need the semi span distance right and uh, secondly we have the shear force equation like this so v is equal to there are two equations so minus 13032 so these two equations has been used okay for the terms uh, which we have been expanded and uh, we will be going to find the solution for this two terms okay that is uh, two shear forces has been uh, find out for two limits okay right Okay. Now we can use the equation same here, and uh, we will be having span here, right? Uh, we will be having semi span. You need the semi span distance now. So as per that, we just uh, copy and uh, paste this uh, semi span details from your previous sheet, that is lift force distribution sheet. So up to eighteen point four two, you are fine. Okay. Control C, Control V. Right. now what we are going to do is uh, from 0 to 5 see here you can check from 0 to 5 we are going to use this first formula and from 5.5 to 18.42 we are going to use the second part right so what is that is uh, we have minus 13032.46 okay and then multiplied by y so what is your y this is your y okay and then Minus seven hundred point seven three one. Okay, seven hundred point seven three one into open braces. Okay, so we got y here again, y here, and then close braces. Okay, to the power of square. Okay, and percent. So we'll be getting the answer, and up to five we have to check. Yeah, up to five I had checked the value and. Uh, Uh, the value of w has been calculated since the engine were present we will be having the negative load at the initial case right and uh, after that we will be going to estimate with this formula that is the second formula so equal to what is the second formula 35036.54 into y so what is your y your y is in the left hand side yes 
and then uh, minus seven hundred point seven three one. Okay, seven hundred point seven three one into and then open braces again. This cell, so what is like this cell? That is your voice point. Okay, close the braces and then square. Right. So we will be getting the value of after five point five. What is the value Please of share code you are getting? And uh, here you can drag the cells, and after that uh, you can drag the cells, and you are finding the total weight now. Right. Now for semi span and for this share force, okay, we are going to plot the share force diagram. Right. So insert, and uh, here we can go for this plot. Okay. So we will be going for this scatter with the smooth lines markers. Okay. So while you plot it, you could be able to draw the shear force diagram like this. Right. So this is your shear force diagram. Right. So we will be having the negative weight and uh, uh, due to the engine, and uh, we will be having the positive uh, weight distribution afterwards, where uh, the weight distribution will be ends with positive at the tip. So this is the shear force variation, where your shear force is increasing at the tip. So as shear force increasing at the tip, what happens to the lift here? So in the lift, we will found that in the tip we have the minimal lift, and in the root we are having the maximum lift. So that we are producing maximum lift at the tip in order to make the shear force at the end as a maximum. So such like as an cantilever beam, right? So we are using the cantilever beam state formula and uh, we had simplified the shear force diagram for the particular thing. And I can find that uh, uh, when uh, engine is present, okay, we have to uh, make the shear force diagram as positive and uh, uh, we had done this one, okay? So this is your shear force diagram. So I can just edit the names here. So this is your lift distribution. And this is your shear force distribution. And next we are going for Bending moment distribution. Right. So next we are going for bending moment distribution. Right. So we have semi span now. For each semi span distance, okay, we are going to find the bending moment distribution. Now we are uh, getting back to the graph, right? That uh, we have the shear force diagram here. Uh, we have the uh, shear force distribution, which has been at the exactly at the tip of the wing. We will found that zero. Okay, that is we have to close. We have to start from zero and we have to end with zero. So based on that, uh, we can also make the extra span eighteen point four two. Okay, and then uh, we can make this as well as zero. Okay, so that. Uh, uh, you can select the graph and you can drag it. Sorry, you have to select the graph completely. And uh, we can make the graph once again. So, insert, scatter plot. Yes, we are getting the result. Okay. Right, so these things you have to map properly for your own design aircraft. Okay, so and then a bending moment distribution. Now we are going to find the bending moment distribution. So for this, we have to work it out. So here we will be having the you are going to integrate this equation. So integrate with the equation with respect to y, right? So on integrating this equation with respect to y, what we are getting that is the moment m is equal to. So this is your first limit equation that is for zero to five, you are doing this process. So here minus one, three, zero, three, two, point four. Okay. This y becomes as y square by two and minus of 
we got y cube by three. Okay, y cube by three. So what is the answer now? So what is the first term? Y square. And what is the second term? Y cube. Right. So minus six five one six point two three y square, and then minus two three three point five eight. Okay. Since you are dividing by three, we are getting this answer, right? And uh, this is the equation we are getting for uh, span, uh, semi span zero to five. Now for uh, the remaining span uh, five to eighteen point two, uh, eighteen point four two. What is the betting moment? Okay. So. Here you are uh, integrating this step. So y square by two. So divided by two, we are getting this equation, and then y cube by three, uh, we are getting this equation. Okay. So there are two equation for bending moment. Now we have to enter this equation into the Excel sheet. Yes. <clears throat> so we will be having the Excel sheet now. So bending moment m is equal to right. So here you got. Uh, minus two point that is I can uh, just uh, copy down this equation and you try to paste it here right yes yeah it's coming right and uh, we have the other equation as m is equal to from this end to this end okay Yes, now I am giving two equations. Right? And you can adjust it. And uh, you can highlight the cells. And uh, what is your semi span? So just copy down the semi span alone. Copy it. Test it and you are finding the bending moment with the first equation for 0 to 5. So from 0 to 5, we are using the first equation, bending moment equation. Okay. So it is nothing but minus 233.58. Okay. Multiplied by y cube. So your y is here. This y equal to the power of q. Okay, and then we have the other term as minus of six phi. Okay, six phi one six point two three. Okay, multiplied by again same semi span. Okay, multiplied by square. Okay, so to the power of square. So we are getting the answer as zero here, and up to phi. Okay, you will be using this formula and you are estimating the bending moment now. So after finding bending moment, what is my bending moment distribution for the remaining span? Okay, so I'm using the second equation now. So equal to 17518.27 into y square. So y square means this is y and then close the braces square. Okay, and then minus 233.58. Okay, multiplied by and then yeah, and then same cell. Okay, and then cube here, right? So to the power of cube, right? So you are getting the answer for the moment. And uh, when you just uh, drag it for the whole, you are getting the same answer. But you are putting zero at the end. Okay, you are putting zero at the end, right? And uh, yes, uh, now we're just plotting the graph now. So insert. So choose this plot, and you have find the value of bending moment now, right? So this is your bending moment distribution of my thing. And uh, you may also check here in the report. Yes, I'm having the same ending moment here, right? Okay.
right so this is your printing moment variation and this is your shear force variation diagram uh, which has been calculated for the span wise distribution for my print okay so you have to uh, find the lift distribution shear force distribution and the bending moment distribution for your wing okay and uh, we will be using only a small change in this formula so according to your formula your take off weight that is your gross weight your gross weight of the aircraft is taken here and you are substituting here and you will be getting some answers and uh, you will be having your weight distribution right so engine weight so engine weight it depends on the configuration you will be having your own engine weight so this engine weight should be different and uh, this equation is completely changing and uh, this w equation is also changing that is your lift equation depends on the uh, root part and the tip part okay so you may know this equation and uh, if your wing is set to be triple saddle we are going to use otherwise what we are going to do is uh, here you are put, going to put the value as lambda as zero here that is lambda is equal to one here so if your wing is not set to be a tapered wing uh, then you are just uh, putting the zero here so as uh, one minus one becomes zero so this term becomes zero right and uh, your lr is set to be the uh, overall lift that is uh, uh, root root lift is set to be called as an uh, lift produced through the wing okay so uh, if a tip wing is uh, considered okay you will be having this lt okay the equation is completely different right so uh, after this uh, your experiment number 2 has been completed so this is your experiment number 2 so you have to make this tabulation what you have to do is you have to edit all the values of shear force in the bending moment just drag and paste your values from the excel sheet and uh, from the excel sheet you just uh, copy and paste your graph sheet here right and in bending moment you have to paste it your graph in the bending moment and the next one is fuselage load distribution 